so when you open TerraSync you'll see these two little plugs that's trying to connect to my internal GPS of this device and once it connects you'll see the little satellite icon and the number of satellites you're tracking at the moment so I'm not tracking anything yet if you use this device for the first time you'll see it might take about five or ten minutes before it start tracking satellites so just leave it outside make sure you have nice open sky above you you're not underneath trees or next to big buildings and those sort of things that can block satellites make sure you open and then you'll see there we go I'm starting to track satellites I've got four at the moment you can see on your sky plot more or less where they are and more or less your accuracy you can see it's coming down 23 meters 22 so the more satellites you start to track you'll see your accuracy will get better with time so in TerraSync you've got these menus if I click on the top here you have these five basic menus in TerraSync so it will always open under status and underneath this menu if you're in status you'll see at the bottom there's other menus that you can access for the status then uh, this is your other menus I'm not going to go into that now I'm just going to take you to if I click on status I'm going to go to setup just to show you setup is all your settings in TerraSync just to take you through the basic settings that you might want to go and change um, in TerraSync so once you've changed this you'll never have to go in here again and change it every day once you've set it to these settings then it will stay like this unless you go and change it yourself so the first one I'm just gonna go into logging settings you'll notice that you've got this keypad on TerraSync or on your device you can access it by clicking on this little keyboard icon so if I click on it it will take it away if I click on it again it brings it up so I'm just going to take you through some of the basic settings here the first one your accuracy settings this is just the display for this two little arrows here you see on the top so it shows me my horizontal accuracy and it shows me in the field in the field meaning unprocessed um, data so you can change this display if you want so normally you always want to see your horizontal accuracy and not your vertical so your horizontal accuracy that's it at the moment and if you change this to processed post processed meaning that it uh, it's gonna show the accuracy that it thinks it's gonna be after you post processed your data with a base that you've downloaded base data in Pathfinder Office so it's an estimate it's not 100% what it will be it's just an estimate as what it think it's going to be and you choose how far you're gonna how far is your base station from you that you're working from that day and it will estimate that is the accuracy that might be getting um, this use accuracy base logging if you switch this on you can also say you can apply that for all the features or just uh, any uh, just a certain feature the point or the line and area but if you apply it for all features then you can type in the required accuracy so you can change this say depends on your device as well so you can click on one meter then it won't log any data if the accuracy is above one meter but like I said it depends on your device if you have a Juno then if you put it on one meter you are gonna stand there for the whole day it won't reach accuracy below a meter because that's not how the Juno was designed the Juno is between three and five meters so this is just when you require a certain type of accuracy I'm just gonna leave this on 10 meters because I am using a Juno and then when you finished with your settings then you say done 
Okay. So you'll see I've put this on post process now. So it won't show me my accuracy unless I open a file. So I'm just going to take this off and say just show me the accuracies in the field. Okay. And this accuracy based logging, I'm going to switch this off as well. Because like I said, I'm using a Gino. And uh, I'm not uh, requiring to get a below meter or whatever accuracy I want. This next setting, point vertex auto pause count, is when you're logging data, when you open a file for yourself, when you're logging data, you can set it in this menu so it can log as many points as you want. You can set this up, type in points, let's for say for example I'm going to put in there 30 points. So this means it's going to log 30 positions, it's going to take 30 seconds because it logs a position per second, one second, one position or measurement. So it's going to log up to 30 measures and then pause itself. But it doesn't mean it's only going to take 30 measurements. You can, if you want, you can still say resume and it will carry on with that. So this is just a like a default setting you can you can activate in uh, in the settings here. Antenna height is uh, the distance from your unit to the ground. More or less, how are you going to have it in your hand while you taking measurements? So more or less 1.3 meters, I think, is fine. Also, if you click on here, confirm, it will ask you per file. If you close it, it will ask you to confirm if you really want to close it. Or you can put it on per feature or never ask you. I'm just going to say per file. Then also the type. This is your antenna type. So whatever unit you're using is... The one that you, if you're using a Geo Explorer, you must select this on Geo Internal, Geo Explorer Internal, or Nomad. You select Nomad Internal, but this is a Juno that I'm using, so it's Juno Internal. Okay, not gonna. There's nothing you need to do under the part number. Then I'm say done. Let me go down. Then allow positions uh, update. You can leave it on yes or you can put it on confirm so it will ask you if you want to update the positions then also confirm end feature I'm gonna say yes so after you've taken your positions you can before you close it will ask you to confirm this file name prefix so it will add anything you type in here at the moment, if you leave it like this, R, it will have R and then the date and the time that it will put in for you automatically before you open a file. But you don't have to use that. You can delete it and you can put in any file name that you want. I'll show you when we open a file. Also with waypoints files, the same story. Okay, and then the type uh, uh, between feature logging, you can switch this on. What this means is if you... Uh, measure a feature in the field and you close that feature and then you walk to the next point that you want to take it will log however you tell it to log every one min, uh, second or every five seconds it will still take a point they call it breadcrumbs so you can see when you download your data all the little points between the features that you've taken so you can switch this on or off it depends on you I'm gonna take it off and then that's it for this logging settings and you say done now also okay in GNSA settings or GPS settings like on some older devices this is only where you can choose your port that you're using this is the port for the internal GPS the internal GPS of your device. If this is on a different port or not on the correct port then it won't connect to your GPS here. Unless you have an external device that you're using then you have to go and select yeah, the device that you're using, a serial cable or a Bluetooth 
but in this case we're just using the internal so by default it should be on the correct port you, you shouldn't have to go and change anything here unless you're using external device this is where you'll come and change it so you make sure it connects to external device and not your internal but in this case we're using the internal GPS so you want it to connect to the internal and then we say done real-time settings is uh, if you're using devices like the Pro XRT that you get Omnistar corrections you'll go in here and you'll change your real-time settings set it up so you can get a real-time correction um, in the field but we're not getting it with our little handout Juno here so I'm not going to go into your real-time settings what we're going to do is we're going to go collect, collect features in the field and then come back download it and then process it for real-time you get the real-time correction immediately in the field coordinate systems this is where you can come and change your coordinate systems the way that you want if you're using latitude longitude or you're using you just click on this little arrow you can go down to South Africa let me find it here you can change it to South Africa choose your zone that you're using and your altitude reference if it's ellipsoidal light or the height above mean sea level and your altitude units meters you can change this any way that you want okay also your geoid there's a geoid model for you already in here and your coordinate units if you want to see it in meters or any of the other options meters is the most common and your coordinate display order if you want to see your north coordinate first or your east coordinate first this is all the settings that you your coordinate system that you can change the way you want if for instance you leave it on latitude and longitude or you put it on the South African system it doesn't matter if you capture your data using this coordinate system and then you realize oh but you wanted it in a different system because you can always when you download your data in Pathfinder Office you can always change the coordinate system there as well and it will change your coordinates to the system that you want so it doesn't matter if you choose something different here and then afterwards realized uh, that you didn't want it in that system or coordinates coordinate system so you can change it afterwards in Pathfinder Office okay so that's it for your coordinate systems I'm just gonna say done or let me change it back to latitude longitude as it was just to show you that you can change it put it on north first again and then I say done units this is where you'll change how do you want to uh, your units to be displayed so your distance units in South Africa we like to see meters and square meters by default all this will be set up for you but you can go and change this if you want and then you say done and that's it for all your settings so like I said you're never gonna have to go and change this or you don't have to change this every day or go through it every day this will stay the same as you've changed it just now so unless you want to go and change something then you go into setup this button here the GNSS button or on some devices it will show some of the other devices will show GPS this is just to connect to your internal GPS receiver so if I click on this button it will ask me are you sure you want to disconnect from the receiver I'm just gonna say yes so I just want to show you if you open TerraSync and you don't see your little satellite icon there on the top go to setup make sure you go to setup and you go and click on the GPS or GNSS button and you'll see there it goes the little two plugs and then it connects and you see a little satellite icon and the number of satellites you're tracking so I'll show you if you click on status there's the satellites you can see it on the sky plot little map what it looks like this is the satellites I'm tracking at the moment